Pro wrestling is amazing. I've been obsessed with it since I was a kid. Where else can you see two men fighting inside of a grocery store and one has to stop to take a milk break? Or have a man start dating a woman who looks like his actual wife and then throw a dead fish at her? Or have a giant mummy named the Yete hug a man to death? And let's not forget about the Hulk Hogan monster truck that runs on a 50-50 blend of bald eagle tears and cholesterol. And sometimes, you know, they do moves and body slam each other. To say that I love wrestling is an understatement. I have a framed photograph of the million dollar man Ted DiBiase in my house. The officiant at my wedding was a pro wrestler. So it's only fitting that I pit two passions of mine against each other in a steel cage. Join me on this episode of Push Start, where we take a look at pro wrestling arcade games. First up, let's start with The Big Pro Wrestling, released by Technos Japan in 1983. I did things, but to be honest, I'm not sure how. The controls were kind of incomprehensible to me. The game is amazingly hilarious though, everyone walks around like background dancers and thriller. There's no character select and it's always a tag team match. It's cool to go back and see where wrestling games began in the arcade, but there just isn't much to it. Fun fact though, the player characters are definitely based on the Funk Brothers, Dory and Terry. Literally the only thing I have to say about Champion Pro Wrestling is it's kinda cool to see where Master Chop Chop Onion got his start. Mania Challenge, another Technos Japan release, is much more upbeat and fast, unlike a lot of the games released around this time period in the late 80s. By today's standards, it's incredibly basic, but I did enjoy the time I spent with it. Oh, and you definitely need to check out this insane flying crossbody. Rest in peace, Insane Warrior. Rest in peace. Grudge Match, developed by Yankee Game Technology 1987, was a game I wasn't familiar with. Again, there's no character select and the controls took some getting used to even with them forever pasted onto the screen in the lower corner. I never did figure out what the cheer button did. However, I did get to suplex my opponent onto my manager and then murder him with a giant weight after the match. 10 out of 10. Let's move on to Champion Wrestler, released by Taito in 1989. Cool, colorful roster to choose from, with an obvious Tiger Mask ripoff that looks strangely like future concept art for King from Tekken. The game unfortunately plays poorly though, and the sound effects are grating. Not to mention that cutting room floor Castlevania style music that just doesn't fit at all. However, I did get to giant swing my opponent out of the ring though, and that was pretty cool. The main event from Konami in 1988 has a colorful cast of characters ripping off who was popular at the time, like Ricky Steamboat and King Kong Bundy. The game has a cool commentary system, but the visuals leave a lot left to be desired. Thankfully at this point we're starting to get a larger variety of move types. May have to agree with the commentator though that you need to have brain damage to enjoy it. Let's move on to Wrestle War, developed by Sega and released in 1991. Only one character to play as yet again. You have a kick and a punch, and grapples initiate when you're close to your opponent. However, it felt totally random if a grapple actually happened. I wasn't able to ever get another move besides a body slam to come out, despite looking at a move list. The game looks great though, and has some really cool presentation features, like the manager promo in between matches. Uh, check it out if you want to, just for the visuals alone. I can't wait to see you go down! Ring Rage, released by Taito in 1992, is finally something completely up my alley. Shitty, digitized actors! But Mortal Kombat this isn't. Instead, we have awesome characters like an evil terrorist who spits fire into the face of audience members, whips people with a chain, and finally has a bottle smashed over his head. This game is awesome! Body Slam, released in 1992, looks and plays like a game released years in the past. However, we do get our first actual wrestler in one of these games. Body Slam features Japanese women's wrestling star Dump Matsumoto, which totally looks like a fake name considering she's up against such titans as Wanda Turbo and Susie Chopstick. It's a tag team only game that feels horribly dated. However, it's pretty cool that an all women's wrestling game exists and came out in the early 90s. 
And now I'd like to present my first match in Body Slam in its entirety. I was attacked and beaten while the game was still loading. That's gotta be a first. Up next is Blazing Tornado, developed by Human in 1994. If you just got excited by me saying the word human, it's with good reason. Human develops the Fire Pro Wrestling franchise. Unfortunately, Blazing Tornado is about as far away from Fire Pro as you could possibly get. It has an interesting cast of characters, including a dude with a gun who never uses it, and T-Hawk from Street Fighter. It's got some pretty cool stuff with the presentation and character introductions, but it's incredibly button mashy and it just doesn't play well at all. It's sad considering what the studio had done before this, and certainly what it would then go on to do. Uh, three Count Bout, released by SNK in 1993, a game I had such high hopes for. I'm a huge SNK fan. However, the game is incredibly button mashy and doesn't control very good at all. It has a great visual style though, and certainly some original character designs and obviously some ripoffs. I love having Discount Abdul the Butcher versus Majora's Mask. Next up is a franchise near and dear to my heart, the Muscle Bomber series. Muscle Bomber Duo would best be known in America as Saturday Night Slam Masters. I played the hell out of this game as a kid. A local restaurant had the arcade cabinet and my babysitter had it for the Super Nintendo. I always figured the two games were exactly the same minus the name being changed for the US release. However, as I got older and started importing Super Famicom games, I realized that they played totally differently. Muscle Bomber Duo's controls are much more easily learned with greater variety, and it has a larger character roster. Something I always loved about these games is that both of them feature Mayor Mike Hager of Final Fight fame. Sadly, the series took a turn for a ditch when the sequel Ring of Destruction was released. This game is a straight-up 2D fighter with Street Fighter-esque special moves activated by things like a traditional fireball motion. The game is barely a wrestling game, and it's pure garbage when looked at as a fighting game. Definitely skip it. Wrapping things up, we're going to start talking about licensed wrestling games, and I'm sure you're waiting for me to talk about the WWF ones. However, there were a couple in Japan I wanted to touch upon. Token Red Student 3, released by Namco in 1997, plays like a prettier No Mercy. Controls are very simple, two grapple buttons, an attack and a run. It plays fine and looks not too bad in terms of early polygonal wrestling games, and features the full New Japan Pro Wrestling license. Its All Japan counterpart, Zen Nippon Pro Wrestling, has a great roster to choose from, but definitely doesn't play as smooth as the New Japan game. It has some pretty cool camera work, but it's way too easy to get stuck in a loop of the CPU's attacks without a way to get free. This version of Zen Nippon Pro Wrestling says featuring Virtua in the game's title, and that's because Jeffrey and Wolf from Virtua Fighter are playable characters. Alright, it's time. We're going to start diving into those legendary WWF arcade games. Let's start with WWF Superstars, released by Technos in 1989. For the time, it has a great roster to pick from. The game is incredibly colorful and has fantastic presentation that laid the groundwork for what's to come. It's a little hard, however, to get excited about this game considering we know what's about to come down the pipeline, but it's certainly worth revisiting. Up next is the one we're all waiting for, WWF WrestleFest released in 1991. This is god tier wrestling arcade games. WrestleFest blew my child mind out of the back of my soft skull. Our local golf dome had the cabinet and I would fake being friends with kids who would have their birthday parties there so I could just go and play it. It has fantastic graphics that evoke the superhero and action figure like status of the late 80s and early 90s WWF roster. It has an excellent cast of characters including non-playable boss characters in the Legion of Doom. This is the quintessential arcade wrestling game and is a must play not just for wrestling fans but for arcade fans. Warrior, 
In 1995, WWF ditched Technos and moved on to Midway. WWF WrestleMania features fully digitized character models and combos, just like another Midway game, Mortal Kombat. Each member of the roster has special moves that break reality, like The Undertaker shooting ghosts out of his hands. One feature that always made me laugh is if you hit wrestlers hard enough, objects will fall out of them. If you hit Yokozuna hard enough, a ham goes flying. The game did receive a sequel, but it was released on home consoles only, and it's called In Your House. We've reached the end of the road, and I'm sorry that we have to end things on a down note. We're looking at Royal Rumble, released by Ukes in 2000. Fans of home WWF games know that Ukes has been all over the place in terms of quality since taking over the rights to the games. But at the time of release of the Royal Rumble game in 2000, they've been on a hot streak. This game certainly gave insight into what kind of wasteland was on the horizon for fans. The game has decent controls and thankfully you're not stuck having to lock onto other wrestlers. It's a pretty good roster for the time, but it just doesn't have the lasting power. It's a really cool looking arcade cabinet though. And that's pretty much it. Royal Rumble was the last big wrestling game released in arcades. I had a lot of fun researching this project. I found games that were pure garbage. I found games that were absolutely hilarious, whether they intended to be or not. And I found a few hidden gems along the way. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Push Start, and I'll see you next time.